So in this video, we're going to look at vitamin B12 absorption. And we begin by drawing here the stomach and the small intestine. Here is the duodenum of the small intestine. Um, so, you know, here's the stomach and then the esophagus. And here's the pancreas. The small intestine is divided into three parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The ileum connects to the large intestine. But we won't really talk about the large intestine in this video. Anyways, other important structures and cells are the salivary glands here. And within the stomach are two important types of cells that we must talk about. These are the chief cells which produce your pepsinogen and your parietal cells which secrete hydrochloric acid. Okay, so where do we get vitamin B12 from? Well, we can, get, we can get it from a variety of foods such as egg, milk, fish, and red meat. So here is a red meat which contains vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is known, known formally as cobalamin. So the red meat is eaten and travels to the stomach. It has already been partially digested by the mouth. The salivary glands secrete an important substance for vitamin B12 absorption called haptocorin, also known as R binder. To make it a bit more confusing, um, it is also known as transcobalamin 1. Keep note of that, transcobalamin 1. Anyway, so this also travels to the stomach. In the stomach, the chief cells secrete pepsinogen, which gets converted to pepsin in the presence of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is secreted by the parietal cells of the stomach. Hydrochloric acid, together with pepsin, help in the digestion of meat, liberating the vitamin B12. The liberated vitamin B12 has high affinity for the R binder within the stomach, and so they bind, forming the R binder vitamin B12 complex. And this complex then travels to the duodenum of the small intestine. Aside from producing hydrochloric acid, the parietal cells also secrete an important substance for vitamin B12 absorption. This molecule is intrinsic factor. The intrinsic factor released in the stomach will travel to the small intestine as well. Now within the small intestine, the pancreas secretes its juices, the amylases, the lipases, as well as proteases, which will break down protein. Proteases break down the R binder, which will liberate the vitamin B12 once again. In the small intestine, the liberated vitamin B12 has, high, has affinity for the intrinsic factor. And so they form the vitamin, vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. This complex then will travel through the small intestine towards the end of the small intestine, uh, the ileum. Now, within the ileum, there are receptors for intrinsic factor. So here, if we zoom into, uh, the, into this section, we can see that there's ileal cells. And on the basal side of these cells are the, uh, of these columnar ileal cells are, is the portal vein, which will return blood to the liver. Anyways, it's on the apical surface of these cells where we find intrinsic factor receptors. So when the intrinsic factor carrying the vitamin B12 comes along, it will bind onto the intrinsic factor receptor and then this whole, th this whole thing will get endocytized. So when the vitamin B12 is absorbed, it will be released into the plasma. And in the plasma, the vitamin B12 will bind onto plasma proteins called transcobalamin 2. 20% of vitamin B12 binds to transcobalamin 2 in the plasma. However, interestingly, the majority of vitamin B12 is bound to transcobalamin 1. Remember, also known as the R binder. Transcobalamin 2 is responsible for responsible 
for delivering the vitamin B12 to body tissues, whereas transcobalamin 1 also circulates and binds approximately, as I mentioned, 80% of the circulating vitamin B12, rendering it unavailable for cellular delivery by the transcobalamin 2. So transcobalamin 2 delivers the vitamin B12 to body tissues, and that's the important one. The vitamin B12 is important for DNA and RNA synthesis, red blood cell production, as well as lipid synthesis, which is, a important, which is important for maintaining healthy nerve cells. Because by lipids, I mean myelin sheath, which are on your nerve cells. So if you have vitamin B12 deficiency, you can see signs and symptoms such as anemia, fatigue, numbness, tingling because of the unhealthy neurons, slower healing, shortness of breath, muscle weakness, unsteady movements, again because of the nerves, and, in, and, and, and also an increase in homocysteine levels. The increased homocysteine levels is due to the chemical reaction that are inhibited when there is vitamin B12 deficiency. And we really won't go into that um, now. Okay, so what sort of problems can give you this vitamin B12 deficiency? Well, we can see, well, we can see this, these signs and symptoms, if someone doesn't eat any food containing vitamin B12, so dietary problems. They could probably also have an infection which will prevent them from absorbing vitamin B12. And there's, there can also be an inflammatory reaction in the, in the GIT damaging your stomach or your intestine. But a major cause of vitamin B12 deficiency is a condition known as pernicious anemia. Now pernicious anemia is an autoimmune disorder where antibodies attack your parietal cells in the stomach. This results in vitamin B12 deficiency because no intrinsic factor is produced. So let us look at pernicious anemia where the parietal cells are attacked. So here we are zooming into the parietal cell. We can also find tissue dendritic cells in this area. So looking at it from a step-by-step -step process, the, den the dendritic cells, clear apoptotic parietal cells produced during normal turnover of gastric mucosa. On the parietal cells, you have hydrogen potassium uh, ATP transporters, which are responsible for producing or secreting the hydrogen ions that, that is necessary for hydrochloric acid production. During the turnover, the dendritic cell somehow takes in the ATP transporter and deems it as foreign. And so the dendritic cell will present this hydrogen potassium ATPase antigen to naive CD4 T cells in the lymph node. So here is the lymph node with a naive CD4 T cell. When the, when the naive CD4 T cell is stimulated to become a T cell, T helper cell, it will stimulate B cells to produce antibodies against this antigen. The CD4 T cell will also become hydrogen uh, potassium ATPase pump reactive and basically cause an immune response towards the parietal cells which contain these hydrogen potassium ATPase pumps. So the immune system attacks these parietal cells. Okay, in pernicious anemia, you can have antibodies, autoantibodies, and immune cells attacking either parietal cells, the intrinsic factor themselves produced by the parietal cells, or the intrinsic factor receptors on the ileal cells, which is in the small intestine. We just looked at an example of when the immune system attacks the parietal cells. When antibodies, however, attack either of these things, the result will be a decrease in vitamin B12 absorption. And so we see the signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency.